difficult to express my feelings about the adventures that must lie ahead. a good place to catch a horse. You got two box canyons, there's only one way out. You sure couldn't tell it from up here. You can't tell it from down there either, unless you know it. They're traveling slow. Let's get them. We will. But we'll get them where we want them first. Smart look up there. Now you can see us for a mile. Yeah, but I think we'll get a little closer to him this time. Jim, we've been after him all day and we haven't even narrowed the gap. Let's quit. I'm tired. You can go on back if you want to, Bo. I came out here to get him. I'm going to get him. All right, but he might as well have a rainbow over his head. It's just like chasing a pot of gold.
done. Yeah. Just the way you wanted it. Big and bold. We're gonna make Mr. Hardy sweat till we find the right place and the right time. Feels good after 10 years. You pass them along? Yeah. Red Martin, Big Tom Purdy. There's plenty more in the saddlebag in case you want to pass them out along the way. And now he's going to know what it's like to be hunted down like an animal. Never knowing where, when, or who. I've been waiting to bind shoes on him. Well, how'd you do this time, Jim? Get closer? The money got a little closer to me. Tried to shoot me in the back. I think I've got a warrant at Dodger somewhere in the office to match that face. Yeah, looks like Big Tom Purdy. You got one in there to match this one? Looks like he had a reason for trying it. To me like he had 5,000 reasons for trying it. I don't think he's gonna be the last one to try it either. Well, that poses us a problem, Jim. I can't arrest every gunslinger who rides through town. Not until they've done something wrong. I reckon I don't have to tell you, Jim. Be careful. Sure don't. Now, let me see. Salt, lard, sealing wax. This is all our 30 cents, Miss Tina. I'll put it on the bill for you. Is there anything else? Tina, what can a girl do to show someone she really likes them? If you mean Jim Hardy, grow up. I didn't say who. You didn't have to. Well, oh, buy him a present or something. Now, where did I put that thread? Well, what kind of a present? Something he wants more than anything else in the world. Oh, all he wants is that old wild horse. That's it. Thanks, mister. Absolutely charming. Forgive me, I, I didn't mean to eavesdrop. She's a delightful child. Thank you. Jay Squire. Tina. Miss Tina? How pleasant. May I help? Well, you're very kind. truth about this savage wasteland. Well, I will write the truth. I'll call it a wilderness without hope. What was it Dante said? All hope abandon ye who enter here. This is sure is pretty of mine, huh? Name's Chance, Nathan Chance. I don't know about you, but I get bored traveling and feel like talking. Where are you from? New England. Excuse me. Chance out there. Maybe better than here. 
I don't know about that. Some short-legged Comanche didn't lift that pretty rolled-up hair of yours, that desert sun that sure cooked the salt out of you. What a quaint way you have of putting it. Well, I ain't no Cape Cod blue blood man. was trying so hard to sell to the civilized part of the world. Now what? Now let's get some sleep. Sleep? How can you think about sleep after being shot at? <laughs> Don't let that upset. That man ever would get any rest in this business. Then I'm going to stay with you. I don't think that'll be necessary, Bo. What are you going to do? Just walk around like a big bullseye, waiting for a sudden shot in the back? I don't think I'm going to have to walk around much. I think they'll come to me. You think that's very smart? Probably not, but can you think of a better way? No. You sure are mule-headed? <laughs> I expect I am. Well, promised old Jeb I'd bring him out some supplies tomorrow, so I think I'll just stay in town tonight. Good night, Bo. Good night, Jim. Squire, isn't it? Seems to me we met quite some time ago. Ten years ago exactly, Mr. Hardy. <laughs> Tina, I think your mother might be looking for you. Might not be a bad idea if you went along home now. But Squire and I have got some things to talk about that I can't believe would be of any particular interest to you. Oh, I think it could be more to the point, Mr. Hardy. You see, Tina, he's concerned that someone might see you in the presence of an ex-convict and will misconstrue. Am I correct in your fatherly concern for Tina, Mr. Hardy? That's just about it. Mr. Squire has already told me about his trouble with Wells Fargo. And since his debt to society has been honorably paid, I, I choose to accept it as such. I'm sure you are, Tina. Now go home. Excuse me, sir. Of course. Sit down, Mr. Hardy. I took this off of a dead man today. That and the fact that you're back around these parts again seems a little more than a coincidence to me. Piece of paper with no printer's mark, no witnesses, your word against mine. The jurisprudence, Mr. Hardy. I could sue you for false arrest. You think that's gonna make it easy to shoot me in the back, huh? I don't think you'd give a man that chance. No. I just want to see you sweat every time a doorknob turns or a boot kicks dirt behind you. Well, I get paid to sweat. So that's going to be nothing new. That's dangerous country, Mr. Hardy. The steep rocky cliffs to fall over and those cold mountain lakes. You want to die with a frozen smile on your face? Drop in. You get a little more than 10 years for murder, Squire. 
I was talking about an accident, Mr. Hardy. Like the kind you could have up in the hills looking at that black stallion. I never did happen. Only three people would know it was no accident at all. You. Me. And Ray. My lieutenant. Still the same. Still loyal after these ten years. And still unable to think with any other brain but yours. How do you want it, Hardy? And you're still holding your gun hand to see, Squire. Ray. Why not? I'll give them to you for free. You can keep the 5,000. Why not now? Because Mr. Hardy helped me learn two things over those 10 years. The classics, which makes such charming small talk with his friend Tina. And patience. I can wait for the right time and the right place. And when it comes, Mr. Hardy, I'm going to kill you. standing there in the vestibule, Sheriff, when I came through. She said the man that shot him jumped train about an hour back. He's gonna have a hard time proving that. Yeah, well, excuse me. I wouldn't jump too many conclusions, Hal. I knew that fellow, he was a bounty hunter. His name was Curran. What's that got to do with it, Jim? Did you ever see a woman shoot a bounty hunter? Murdoch? Yes. Jim Hardy from Wells Fargo. It's the Sheriff Hal Humphrey. Miss Murdoch's the lady I was telling you about, Hal. She's writing a journal for an Eastern newspaper. We tell the folks about the West and what it's really like. Wells Fargo's sponsoring her trip. Well, I guess it's good business. Should spark some of those city women to get their men to buy land out here and settle on it. A woman's point of view can be a dangerous thing. Truth shouldn't be too dangerous, ma'am. Not at all. Only I don't think that's what Wells Fargo wants. Yeah, well, right now I'm more interested in that shooting on the train, Miss Murdoch. Well, fortunately for me, the savage who committed the murder was quite uninterested in removing my road up here. Otherwise, I might have arrived quite bald-headed. <laughs> I'll be at the hotel if you have any further questions. I presume there is a hotel in this... Uh, this town? Yes, ma'am, there is. It's right across the street. However, since you're traveling alone, I'd feel much better about it if you'd come out to the farm and stay with us. Just so I could keep an eye on you for Wells Fargo, you understand? Mr. Hardy, after what happened on the train, I think I can survive without any Western gentleman's eye on me. I prefer forming my own opinions. <laughs> Gonna sell land out here? Looks like she might have formed a few too many opinions already. All this checking's a waste of time. Why don't we just call the sheriff and have him put in jail? It's our job's to try to uphold the law if we can, not bend it around to suit ourselves. But to have a charge before you can hold him, man. You don't call attempted murder charge enough? I mean one we can make stick. Jay Squire released from prison with no prejudice. He's on no wanted list. Harry Rakeover, alias Rake, no known record of previous arrests. Wells Fargo attorneys advise extreme caution. That's absolutely sure of your legal position. Farrell. See what I mean? Yeah. Well, any news? Yeah, all bad. Well, looks like you can quit worrying. I've just been to the stables. Seems like Squire and Rake saddled up and took off early this morning, loaded down with canteens. Maybe we're lucky. They're trying to make Mexico across the desert. No, Swamper said he gave him directions how to get up in the wild horse territory. Salt Canyon. That's up near your place, Jim. I didn't know horses were what they was looking for. They're not. They're looking for an accident to happen. To me. <laughs>
When you finish staring, my good man, would you mind opening the gate? I'd better keep an eye on it. through a woman's eyes is rugged, hard, and cruel, fighting harshly against the pitiful efforts of the pioneers who would invade it. The people are no longer human beings. The West has frozen them, scorched them, flooded them. They're living in a near animal state. Why should I? I didn't murder anyone in cold blood. You weren't lined up in that fella's sights either. I have no intention of standing here discussing morality with you. Let go of my arm. You sure got a chin full of argument. What are you doing out here? I'm writing a book, if you must know. You know, I only read one book in my whole life, Aesop's Fables. There's a story in there about a fox that wanted some grapes. He called him sour when he couldn't reach him. I reckon some folks are apt to feel that way about life when they can't quite grab hold. I'm afraid I still don't understand your language. It doesn't matter what your mouth says. It's what your eyes say. I was just trying to answer the questions your eyes were asking. Maybe I don't see too good. <clears throat> Last time I seen you, it was down in South. Christmas Eve, I believe. <laughs> yeah, I had a few too many tequila eggnogs, as I remember. You didn't like that. Still riding bog on Wells Fargo, Jim Boy? It's an honest living. You still carrying guns for the revolutionaries? No, sir. Those mercenaries take too many risks for too little pay. I gave all that up to come back and go in business for myself. Mr. Hardy, if I may be so bold as to interject, your... your old chum here is a murderer. He's the man on the train. That fella drew down on me first. Got a right to protect myself, don't I? Is that true, Miss Murdoch? Did the other man have his gun out first? Well, suppose he did. I don't see what difference that makes. He still shot him. Makes a good deal of difference. It's the difference between murder and self-defense. But that man was a bounty hunter, Nate. I hope you'll tell that to the sheriff, Jim. Don't matter to some of these sheriffs who the bounty boys bring in, just so they ain't still kicking. Well, I'm not the sheriff, and I can't speak for him. But I can promise you one thing. If you're wanted for anything, somewhere down the line, we'll tangle. Well, we've tangled before, Jim Boy. Took advantage of my condition. That's the best you can do, huh? You want to try me? Looks like you're still one up on me, Jim Boy. I'm going to try to keep it that way. I guess that's all right by me. Just for old time's sake. For old time's sake isn't going to keep me from checking up on you, Nate. Oh, you got responsibilities. I don't. That's the difference between us. And just for the record, Jim Boy, I ain't wanted. Not by nobody. Then why'd you jump the train? Well, I ain't so Snow White the law would believe my story, but I figure you do. The sheriff wants to talk to me. I'll be in town. See you. Bye, New England. I don't think it's too good of an idea for you to be out riding around by yourself, Miss Murdoch. I think you're right. Western law enforcement is apparently quite incompetent. Western law is no different than the other law. Laws are silent in the midst of arms, Mr. Hardy. Cicero. 
And laws aren't valuable only because they're laws, but because there's right in them. A man by the name of Beecher said that. You going back into town? Well, since it isn't safe for a woman to be out alone, I... I suppose I'll have to suffocate in that hotel room. Well, if it becomes too suffocating or too distracting to write, we'd still love to have you to the ranch. You're right up the road there and you can't miss it. Mr. Hardy, let's clarify something. I know that your Western hospitality is only prompted by your employers. What makes you so bitter? I'm not bitter, Mr. Hardy. I'm cynical. Can't you tell the difference? be an easier way to get to Hardy. Be a philosopher, Inc. All good things come to those who wait. Get yourself killed. You need someone following you. Maybe they should. I don't think I have to tell you that tracking a man's a little like tracking a bear. Both get a little cagey when they know you're behind them. You gotta move slow, quiet, become a part of the scenery. I just hope you don't become part of the scenery by being planted under it. How many of those dodges you think are floating around now? Got no way of knowing. The only one we know about for sure is the one we took off with the man who tried to ambush us. Yeah, but he could just be one of ten or twenty or more. That's right. And on the other hand, Squire might just be playing a scare card. Don't be too sure. How many of them do you see? Just one. You see any? I didn't see nothing. If it was just one of them, he shouldn't be too much trouble. You keep him busy down here, and I'll try to get around behind him. next to him. It was Rake, wasn't it? You're a good deal of trouble yourself, mister. You read Martin and his wanted posters all over this country for you, dead or alive. All right, so was Rake. What of it? Who else did he give these posters to? I don't know. <gasps> hey! 
Purdy. Big Tom Purdy. That's all. Just Big Tom Purdy and me. You're lying. Hold it, Paul. Take him on into town. Move out. <laughs> Mind my asking what you're doing? Don't you know a soap making machine when you see one? Soap making machine? Wouldn't it be easier just to buy a bar? Look, I'm running your ranch. I want to save you money. Well, let's change your mind, Miss Murdoch. No. You seem to sit a horse very well for an Easterner. My family's been riding to the hounds for years. I don't want you to misunderstand my intentions of being here, Mr. Hardy. I was told that the haymaker farm is typical of your way of life here. Well, I'd say it's pretty close to it, wouldn't you, Jeb? Oh, Jeb, this is Miss Murdoch. This is Jeb Gain. He more or less runs things around here. Glad to make your acquaintance, Miss Murdoch. Uh, I wouldn't exactly say that this was Boston's Revere Hotel, <laughs> but it's mighty comfortable. You need a doctor. Uh, now, don't you worry about a thing. I'll fix him up as good as new. Now, Miss Murdoch, you come over here and wash off the dirt around there. Come on. I gotta go out to the barn and get me some cobwebs and make a poultice. What on earth are you talking about? You mix them with wheat flour. Ain't nothing like it to stop the bleeding. But that's ridiculous. He'll get an infection from those filthy things. Ain't what the doc says, and I learned it from him. And he's been using them for 40 years. Be right back. The doctor learned it from the Indians. They've been using cobwebs and with a great deal of success for a much longer time than your family's been riding to the house. Really? How fascinating. Well, I suppose you have to make do in such primitive surroundings. Do you mind if I ask you a question? Why did you accept this assignment in the first place? A challenge, Mr. Hardy. Like going up in a balloon. A challenge from your father? I think it's rather generally known that he's one of the largest stockholders in Wells Fargo. At the expense of my mother's life. I'm afraid I don't understand. There's a lot more about this West I understand than you think. My mother was dragged out here away from the decent, civilized life that she knew. They both fought this wilderness for so long, they didn't have the sense left to know it had swallowed them until my father struck gold. For him, it was an escape. But it was too late for my mother. She died in childbirth. Don't you think that could have happened back east or anywhere else? Well, it won't happen to me, regardless of what my father thinks. I'm not interested in romanticizing the West for his further justification. I can only see this part of the country as my mother must have suffered from it. I think that answers all your questions, Mr. Hardy. Not quite. There's one more, if you don't mind. Would you happen to know whether your mother loved your father or not? Why? Is that supposed to justify everything? You're not supposed to answer a question with a question. You're beginning to sound like my father. He has some primitive idea that I don't understand what really counts when it comes to people. I think maybe he's right. You'll find out here, especially in this part of the country, that what really counts is what's inside of a man or a woman. And that if they love each other enough, they can survive almost anything. 
Here we are. This will stop the bleeding in the jiffy, and he'll be as good as new. Good day, Mr. Hardy. I hope you survive. Make a good woman if someone put a firm iron on her. But I guess she ain't no branding calf. Well, you take it easy. I'm not a branding calf either. Well, you better stop behaving like one. sheriff here, sir. I am. My respects to you. I'm Major Bob Shanker, empire builder, and owner of the finest line of cattle this side of the Mississippi. I heard tell about your stock show, and I'm prepared to pay top price for whatever pleases me. Now, my boys here, they work hard and they play hard. Now, this $1,000 should cover any damage they might inflict on your fair town. Good day to you, sir. Come on. Well, I suppose I'd better go look after the literary society. I don't want these boys to add a new chapter to her book. and distress is a little more in your line, Jim Boy. I was on my way when it started getting rough. I could see you were. I checked up on you, Chance. You're not wanted for anything. And as far as the incident on the train goes, bounty hunters have made mistakes before. The sheriff's willing to call it self-defense on the strength of the lady's testimony here. Interesting, Chance. What are you planning to do? Save the lady from sin and corruption? I got better things to do. Well, that was the whole point of our being here. So far, I ain't heard nothing but music. And that clink of glasses, I was screaming female. <laughs> ain't you heard the clink of $50,000? Well, 
now maybe my ears ain't so good. It wouldn't have to be so good. Ain't more than 20 feet from you. And a belt around his waist. It's a lot of fat to be carrying around this middle. Bad for the heart. <laughs> you know, it's there. Oh, I've got good ears. I heard about the major from a boy that used to work for him. Now, what is your plan? I'll show the major a good time and then take a load off his heart. Maybe the best time be tomorrow while this talk show's going on. I'm beginning to wonder if it's safe to step outside the door in this town. Why'd you go in there in the first place? I found my snake pit and I was drawn to it. Like some people are drawn to the smell of blood. The men in that saloon didn't intend to do you any harm. They're hard-working ranchers that were looking for a little relief from a rather difficult job. And they're no different from the men in the East, though perhaps they're a little more direct. I'm sorry, but my first impression that this frontier Wells Fargo is trying to thrust down the throats of civilized people was right. And you're about as wrong as anyone could possibly be. I won't give you the satisfaction of admitting to that by going back, Mr. Hardy. It'll take more than a snake pit to make me give up my journal. I'm going to write about the West in all its chap-diseased glory. Well, I have more important things to do than stand here and argue with you, Miss Murdoch. But I happen to believe in this country and in the people and their dreams. They're taking this frontier, this wilderness. And one day they'll develop it into a fine, decent civilization. They fought this wilderness for so long, they haven't the sense left to know that it swallowed them. Maybe they had a dream once, but no longer. No, it's still there. Though perhaps you can't see it. Sometimes you have to dig very hard before you get to the gold, even if it means getting your hands a little bit dirty. Say what you will, Mr. Hardy. You can't change my mind. Then I won't try. Good day. Yes, sir, Major. I traded Shorthorn to Shanghai Pierce not more than six months ago, just outside Laredo. Well, when is this stock show gonna start? Uh, plenty of time, Major. Let him get rid of the scrub first. Nobody's gonna touch you in the pure place. <laughs> Here, have another drink. Better get it back to his hotel room, boys. You'll have a couple hours to sober up before the purebred auction. The people, the horses, the wagons flow in a muddy stream through this cracker box community. They fought this wilderness for so long, they haven't the sense to... Cover the stairs, we'll back up hot. Who's there? A room service. What do you want? An ice pack for the major, sir. <laughs> and compliments to the management. Oh. Stay nice and still. Nobody will get hurt. What? Easy does it, Major. Small-time high-line rider. You think you're going to get away with this? Let him take the belt off himself. All right, off with it. Fast! You think you're smart, don't you? I chewed up bigger polecats than you and spit them out in bitty pieces. <laughs> Here's an old man full of nothing but bluster. You didn't have to do that. You sure got a way of talking too much. You feel like talking? Talk to them! Chut! She knows you. No, wait. You take her along. Sheriff! 
There's been a shooting up in the Major's room. Did you look the ones who did it? Yeah. I saw a couple of them over in the saloon a while ago, and they, they was boozing the Major up. Let's go take a look. Uh, there's something else, Sheriff. You know that lady journalist? They took her along for a hostage. Are you sure about that, Jake? Sure. It, it was the one you was talking to in the saloon yesterday. Chance. I'll see if I can pick up his trail. You get a bunch of men together and catch up to me as fast as you can. Anybody follow? Clean sweep. I told you, no shooting, Hawk. We got what we wanted. You're branching out. I don't like it. Every man for himself, mister. Even wolves work together. But the big one, the Lobo, he calls the shots. Or he works the fastest in close. I warned you, this was my party. And I remember your last party down in Laredo. We lost a good flank because it was your party. <laughs> You're getting soft, boy. I was always soft about gunning a man down for no reason. I make my own reason. It seems when I went south for a while, I left somebody to cut my throat. <laughs> Maybe it needed cutting, Chance. The wolves, they don't follow no sheep. <laughs> Excuse me, a bullet in the belly is pretty painful. Where is your imagination? We're hunting revenge, my revenge. And I'll let you know what's painful for Mr. Hardy and what is not. All right, all right. We'll do it your way. You mind if we do our waiting in the shade? We're gonna make Mr. Hardy sweat. Now, we could have gotten Hardy cold and you let him go. We're going up in the hills where that stallion owns. The one that Hardy would give his life to get. Well, we're taking our share and heading for Canada. And what you do is your own business. What about her? I don't like witnesses. I'll take her with me. You'll take her with you dead. Maybe you're right, Hawk. Maybe I am getting too soft. If you're a wolf, you gotta act like a wolf. I told you to look out, New England. Don't try it. Outside, New England, get on a horse. All your coats on the floor over there. Fast! Like you said, Hawk, what I do is my own business. I also said your throat needed cutting chance. They don't call me Hawk for nothing. Well, don't miss. You won't get another try. Outside. You're hurt. Nothing serious, but it's slowing us down. I, I want to thank you for saving my life. <laughs> well, don't thank me, New England. Chew my head off like before. I like you better with the same kind of crust I've got. Now, Hardy's house is somewhere nearby. You know where it is? Yes. Now, you get on over there. They'll help you out. I'm not going without you. What's the matter, New England? That crust crumble a little? Please, Chance, let me help. It's too late, New England. I don't want to leave you.
no time, New England. Now or ever. Get out of here. But what are you going to do? I'm going to break out of this place and you'll just be in the way. Give this to Hardy. goes out this way. Somebody. I heard them talking. Oh, well, now, don't you worry no more. You'll be safe here. What's that? The, the money. What money? Nathan Chance gave it to me. Oh, please, Jeb, he needs help. Oh, all right, but uh, I better do something about that cut on your forehead first. times, Jim Boy. Not quite. I told you what would happen if you were ever a wanted man, Nate, and now you're wanted. Now, you better use that gun if you don't plan on going back with us. It's just about as empty as my head. The girl's in trouble, Jim. She was with me. I sent her off for the money. Hawk must have gone after her. Where'd she go? I'm going with you. You're going back to town with the sheriff. This is no time to argue, Jim. I know where she went, and I ain't going to tell you unless I go along. All right. I'll take the responsibility. You got it. Me and my deputies will take these Jaspers back to town. You think you'll be able to arrive? I don't want to leave you here, and I got to get into town and let the sheriff know all about this. Oh, I'm fine. And you've been very kind, Jeb. I want to apologize for the things I said last time I was here. Well, now, I don't remember you saying anything too bad. And I hope you'll devote a whole chapter in your column to me. New England. 
Wheeler, ain't that what he called you? You're a long way from home. What do you want? You shut up. I should have figured you and Chance were in this together the way he looked at you back in that saloon. All right, where is it? <clears throat> you tell me where it is. That money is going back where it belongs, and there ain't nothing you can do about it. <laughs> now you tell me where it is. Well, hold it, Hawk. Remember what I said, Hawk. Don't miss. You won't get a second try. Take care of him, Jed. Get him out of here. Are you all right, Miss Murdoch? Yes. Still keeping one up on me, eh, Jim? You know it's empty. Where's the money? He gave it to me to give to you. What are you going to do with him? I'm going to have to take him back to the sheriff. There were two men killed. I had nothing to do with that, Jim. That's the truth. That'll be up to the law to decide. Mr. Hardy. I want you to let him go. I understand you too clearly, Miss Murdo. I said I want you to let him go. Go on, get out of here. Now, wait a minute, New England. Go on, you said there's no time. Now or ever. He saved my life, Mr. Hardy. I want to return the favor. You're not doing him any favors now by helping him escape. When he brought the money back and gave himself up voluntarily, it's going to make a good deal of difference. He'll still go to prison. Yes, he will. I was in prison, down in Texas. I should have learned something from New England, but I didn't. You want to go back? You made me want to go back. We're from two different worlds, New England. Now we both have to go back where we belong. Maybe my world would have been a lot better if you'd been in it a long time ago. Thank you. My sister's custard pies. training in that Palomilla for two months and I don't want them red. Well, what kind of training? Special? You're darn right it's special. How come every time I look out here, you're in my corral getting on a horse? Nobody knows how to train a horse as well as you do. That's why. Don't give me that sugar talk. I know who you got moon eyes for. And Jim ain't here. Deb, tell me. What you training him for? It's a secret. Well, I won't tell, I promise. Hope to kiss a cripple cricket if I do. You're the best horse trainer in the whole world. 
And I love you with sugar and cream on it. Please. Please tell me. Well, all right. But you better not tell Jim. Because it's a surprise. This is a Comanche whistle. Well, what's it for? Well, now be quiet and I'll tell you. You know that stallion Jim's been trying to catch? Mm -hmm. Well, this little whistle is going to bring him right to our back door. How? Ever hear of a Judas goat? The critter who leads sheep to the slaughter? Well, I got me a Judas horse. Watch this. Good old snowball. We're going to catch us that old black stallion, ain't we, boy? Huh? Jeff, let me try it, please. Absolutely, positively no. Double no. Took three months just to get him coming to me, and I ain't about to... You smell something? Only bread burning. Yeah, that's what I figured. Burning bread? Oh, no! <laughs> I've got the whistle, but you've got the know-how. You lead him through there, and I'll do the rest. You go get him. And, and don't forget to come back when I blow the whistle.
Forgive me, child. Did I startle you? Thank goodness. You are the man I saw in the store yesterday. And dresses to wild horses. You are a most remarkable young lady. My name's Mary J. What's yours? J. Squire. At your service. Could you, uh, be at my service? You see, I'm kind of in trouble. Yes, Mary G. I believe you are. Well, that's that. Sure enough is. Well, they got chance in the gang. Leave it to old Jim. It's too late, New England. I don't want to leave you. We're from two different worlds, and now we both have to go back where we belong. Without figured. Thought you'd belly in here quiet like so as I wouldn't catch you, huh? Mary G. Mary G. <laughs> well, you gotta be sneakier than a Wells Fargo agent to put something over on Jebediah Gaines. It'd have to be pretty sneaky, wouldn't it? Jim? Got something special on your mind, Jeb? No. Just came up here to set the barn on fire. Blasted female horse thief. Take my horse and run all over the countryside. Wait till I get my hands on her. And you want to know if something's on my mind. What are you talking about? What's the trouble? Mary G. That's what's the trouble. She ran off with Snowball over six hours ago and ain't come back yet. Well, she's just a kid. Time doesn't mean much to her when she's on a horse's back. Yeah? She's afraid to come back. <laughs> well, I suppose we could send out a posse after her. Now I'm gonna cut me a switch. Hey, Jim, come quick! I told you there'd be trouble. Look at him, cut up worse than dog meat. That little sneak got off in town and spooked him home because she's afraid to come back here. Doesn't sound like anything Mary G would do. Yeah, well, look around. You don't see her standing anywhere, do you? These are hoof slashes. Hoof slashes? Oh, no. I knew I shouldn't have told her. Told her what? This here pal of Miller. About how I've been training him for a Judas horse. For a what? You know, to catch that black stallion. Oh, Judas horse, all right. For a Mary G. Hey, Jim. She's still out there. Bo's on his way back. Tell him to meet me up at Salt Canyon. There's got to be something I can do. There is. Go on into town, get a posse ready, just in case we need him. Yes, I am. Where is she? It ain't that easy. All right, we'll make it easy. Where is she? I got a deal for you. You cooperate, I'll take you to the girl. What if I don't buy your deal? She dies. Now you figure it out. Now make up your mind. We go alone, or do you find her someplace in the bottom of a canyon? All right. All right, you got a deal.
I covered the bottom of the canyon on the way up. I thought we could fan out from here. Now I look around here. You go on over towards Tabletop Flats and look around there. Tabletop? Jeb said Mary G went after the Black Stallion. You know as well as I do he doesn't range that far. There's no water down there. Boy, you talk too much and you don't listen enough. Now don't argue with me. Get on over towards Tabletop Flats. And remember something else. You remember the way you were tracking this morning. We're gonna be all right then. Maybe. Maybe I'll remember a lot of things. All right, Hardy. Drop the gun belt. Spire's got a fancy plan. Me, I ain't so particular. I'd just as soon kill you with a plain bullet. Come on. Patience, Mary G. Even your stallion knows enough to save his strength. You and I have both learned the advantages of waiting. <laughs> Concerned, Mr. Hardy? Grudges aren't settled with innocent people, Squire. Grudge? Why not call it a reward? A ten years of waiting. If there's anything to be settled, it's between you and I. Not with her. Let her go. On the contrary. She brought us together. At the right time. And the right place. Was a gun in my back? You could have done that back in town. I thought you were a man that was partial to accidents. Ah, but you are going to have an accident, Mr. Hardy. Twist, isn't it? Trample a death by the very horse you wanted so badly.
Halfway to tabletop before I realized what you were trying to tell me. That was close. A little too close to suit me. But you look after him, Bo. Where are you going? I'm going to cut a switch and take care of our little friend here. What on earth do you think you're doing? Taking off off that horse like he was some kind of trained pet. Do you know he could have killed you? I'll tell you one thing. When I get you back to town, if your mother doesn't take a board to your bow, I know I'm going to. What have you got to say for yourself? Nothing. I didn't want that old horse anyway. Well, what'd you go after him for? To get him for you. So why don't you like me? What makes you think I don't? You never even noticed me. That's why I had to get you something special. Oh. And you think you can just go around buying friends, huh? Now, let me ask you something. We're pals, aren't we? Yeah. Every time I go out on the road, don't I always bring you back a present? Mm-hmm. All right, now, I suppose sometimes if I forget to bring you a present, then we're not pals anymore. No, that's got nothing to do with it. Well, that's got something to do with it. What do you think means more to me right now than anything else? That horse, I guess. Well, there was a time when I thought it did, too. Right now, I think it's a whole lot more important for you to learn you can't go buy something you already got, and that's a friend. There's only one way to prove it to you. Let's show you. Let's get on home. Right. Now you come back just as soon as you're able, Miss Murdoch. You're always welcome here. Thank you, Jeb. I might just take you up on that sometime. Good. Goodbye. And Jim. You've been more than fair. I want you to know that I've changed my reading habits from Cicero to Mr. Beecher. Oh. Well, well, I wouldn't discount Cicero too much. They, they each have their own point of view, though it's different. I think it's important we try to understand both of them. All aboard! Well, I'd better take my seat. I want to write the last chapter of my journal while it's still fresh in my mind. Goodbye, Jim. Thank you for everything. Goodbye. Hope you can come back again someday. And as the train twisted its iron way through the limestone hills, I knew that I had learned something about myself as I had learned about them. The arms of the West are open to those who believe and are unafraid. I think I'm welcome there now. And from writing words.